This is the Charming Blacksmiths Workshop that I built for my Valheim community server. I wasn't actually planning on making this a video, but someone commented on my previous video asking if I could since they really wanted to build it. So here we are. Before I start the build guide itself, let me quickly show you around the build so you know what to expect. The first thing you'll probably notice in this build is this built-in smelter and kiln area. So we've got three smelters and two built-in kilns, and we have the iron cage just in front so that any coal dispensed from the kiln will land in here for you to pick up and place into your smelter. Looking at the primary structure itself, we've got the primary entrance, a nice stone detail here, some detail on the roof, and a chimney at the back. Moving inside now, from left to right, we have a hearth with the iron cooking station, and of course we have a chimney up top. And on the right hand side, we've got a maximum level workbench, an artisan table, another hearth, and a maximum level forge. The roof detail gives in some natural light, and the entrance at the back leads to the forest. At the front of the structure we have a decorative stone wall and of course we have a farm on the outskirts just for a little bit of colour. Now that you know what to expect, let's get into the build part of the video. The first thing you'll have to do is set out the foundation. So I'm going to start with the foundation of the main structure, so the one with the two hearths inside. And I'm going to leave enough space in the top right for the built-in kilns and smelters. So start off with an 8x4 stone floor foundation and once you have that, come up to what you want to be the back of the foundation Grab your stone wall 2x1 and you're going to go along this whole side of the structure. You'll come out another 3 blocks, then you're going to grab a stone floor 2x2 two two, and you're going to lay down the foundation for your kiln area. So set out a rectangle that is 6 long and 2 deep and then you can continue the stone wall 2x1s around the length of this foundation. If you've done it the exact same way as I have then you should be left with a 1x1 one one block to fill in at the end. Okay, so again, at the back of the structure, we're going to place down another stone floor 2x2, two two, and again, we'll wrap around a stone wall 2x1, and this is basically going to mark out the area that we're going to place down the earth. So now for the left-hand side of the structure, again, grabbing your stone wall, you're going to go five blocks down. You'll miss out the remainder of this stone floor, and this stone floor, that's going to be an entrance, and then we'll continue the stone wall 2x1, just here and around the front. At the bottom right of the structure we're going to have two stone stairs and then we'll have a stone wall one by one marking out the first pillar of our stone arches. Then we'll count three blocks and on the fourth block we'll mark our second pillar missing out two stone floor pieces for our third pillar and counting out another three spaces and on the fourth we'll mark our fourth pillar. Back with the stone stairs now you want to place them on the 4th and 5th stone floor pieces. So we're going to leave a gap of 1x1 one one just in between the pillar that we placed earlier and the stair positions. On the opposite side of the build now we're going to use the lock point from the stone floor 2x1 to overlap two stone stairs in this gap here. You can go ahead and place in our second hearth and you can already see how quickly this is going to form. If you've managed to do it exactly as I have then you should be looking at an entire foundation like this. But we still need to add some verticality to this. I'm going to start with the built-in kiln area. So the first thing we need to do is build up this stone floor because we want the kilns to be raised off the ground. So we're going to raise up the foundation that we built earlier just by one more row of stone floors. We'll also need to build up the stone walls around the outside. And what I like to do is alternate the bricks so that the joints are alternating like this. We just need it to be built up slightly because what we're going to do is grab our kilns and place down the front of the kiln, the middle of it, and just line it up with the joint line just in front. As you can see, this joint line kind of matches up with the opening of the kiln. And it's really important to do this first because if you place down your stone walls first, then you won't actually be able to place down the kilns. We can now build up the stone wall and we want it to be four higher than the foundation level. So this would just count as row one and we need to go three higher than this. Once you're done, it should look like this, and you'll need to be making use of the one by ones around the kiln opening so that you can fill these gaps with the stone arches. And whilst we're here, we'll make the cage walls. There's going to be a cage wall one by one on either side of the kiln. I have a cage floor just sort of raised off the ground here, and I'll use a cage wall two by two for the front panel just to save some materials. Same again on this side. And to stop this structure from looking so box-like, we're going to jump up top and I'm going to use the stone wall one by ones 
just to add a little bit of detail on the top. I'm going to put one one by one in either corner and two single ones in the middle. You can leave it at this or if you have some spare resources you can grab your cage wall one by one and you'll just need to freeform a cage wall sort of divider between the front and back of the structure because it won't actually snap through the middle of the stone wall. And just like that the built-in kiln area is complete. We'll now continue the alternating bricks around the rest of the structure making sure to go around the hearth just following the outline that we made earlier. Again we want to go four high here and I make sure to miss out the gaps where we're going to have doorways. Once you're done it should look like this and you can come back now with the stone arches and build the stone walls across the top like this. Your stone arches are going to be always built three high from the foundation and they're going to also bridge each gap between the pillars on the exterior side of the structure too. So now with all the foundations for the top layer of stones in place you can simply just build along with these stone wall 2x1s until you're left with this. I do actually have windows around this hearth so let's go ahead and add these in. We're going to use the dark wood arch and the dark wood beam just to mark out where these windows are going to go and then with the stone wall 1x1 one one ready I'm going to take out the walls here and replace them back in so that we have a square space around the windows. we we'll use the same detailing on the outside of the window and we'll also need to do the exact same for this window here. If you have some of these stone pieces fall away, don't worry about it, just replace them back in. It will be stable after you finish the construction, but it's sometimes just a little bit funny building with stone and wood when you're getting things going. Since we're adding windows, we might as well add in the doors. So we're going to have a wood gate on this side of the structure. We're going to have a wood gate just at the top of the stairs on this side of the structure. And we're going to have a wood wall one by one here with the wood door sort of half in the ground and half out the ground. On the side of the structure nearest the kilns we're going to make use of wood pieces for the wall here. So I like to start with wood wall halves along the bottom and then a full wood wall and then wood wall halves again along the top. With this in place we can start to work on some of the structural elements for the roof. So with the wood wall one by one I'm going to build along the length of wood wall here between the stone wall at this side and the stone wall on the left side. All I've done now is jumped up top and placed down some scaffolding pieces so that we can see the roof more clearly. And we're going to grab the wood wall 26 degree and start from this snap point just in here. The reason for this is we want the roof to have a slight overhang. So we're going to use the wood wall 26 degree, go two up, a wood wall underneath it. We'll have a full wall on this side and then we'll go back down to a wood wall 26 degree just here. We'll have the cross on the top and we want to trim off all these open edges with the wood pole 1 meter and the wood beam 2 meter. On top of the full wood wall we'll add a 26 degree channeling out towards the forest side. So if we look at the structure from the front now we can grab the shingle roof 26 degree, we'll come two up on either side just matching the beams that we placed earlier and then we'll have the roof ridge on the top. We can now copy this all the way along the length of the structure making sure that we also have an overhang at the back of the structure. The only areas where we need to do something different is at the front left of the structure above the hearth here. All we need to do is grab the 26 degree shingle roof and we actually face this one out towards the forest. Do along, we'll put a wood wall 26 degree on this side and we'll put a wood wall 26 degree inverted on the bottom side. Just for detail, putting in the dark wood beam and poles. And then the other difference is over here, because we're going to build this fireplace up the way, we don't actually need a roof ridge above these two pieces here. So since we've been speaking about that, I guess the next logical area to work on is the fireplace. We'll place a stone arch on the third layer. That means we can build across the stone wall two by one. And then we're going to start to taper in the chimney as it goes upwards. So we're going to place in a stone wall two by one here and here. So it's two on each corner, two on each corner at this side. And then we can just bridge the gap in the middle here too. So we're alternating the bricks as we build upwards and we're going to continue doing this until we're about two and a half layers above this roof ridge. So we need one more layer here. So you can see now we are two and a half layers of stone walls above the roof ridge. That means we can start to build the roof of the chimney. Wood wall 26 degree stacked on top of each other with the wood half wall underneath. The exact same on the other side and then the shingle roof 26 degree, trimming it off with the dark wood holes and beams. With this one I'm going to put the dark wood beam all the way around the outside 
just because I don't really like the joint between the wood wall and the stone. And then I'm going to build downwards with the dark wood pole at each of the corners. And we'll take these lines all the way down the structure into the floor. Last but not least, we have the other roof detail. So I'm going to miss two rows from the chimney and we're going to take out these three components just here. We need the wood pole one meter, one going in each corner. And then we're going to build out one on either side. We'll place down a little construction block and then we have the wood beam two meters. Delete the construction block and we'll put a wood beam two meters again on this side. So from above, it looks like each of these corners shapes a little T. And this is going to allow us to grab our shingle roof 26 degree and build up and over the top like this. Now since we don't have a roof ridge in the middle here, I'm going to add the wood beam just to make it look more similar to the other parts of the roof. And then we're going to trim it off with the standard wood beam 26 pieces. Sorted. For the little stone detail, we're not going to have an overlap, so it's just going to be shingle roof 26 degrees up, shingle roof ridge 26 degrees, and then a single shingle roof 26 degrees, but this time we're locking into the top of the ridge here so that there's not an overlap onto the inside. We can drop down now and we're just going to be putting a regular wood trim on each of these edges of the roof and we'll do that at the front and back of the structure. Time to grab your paved road and pave this whole area however much you want to pave and you can see now it's starting to take some shape. So let's place the smelters in. We want to line up the middle of the smelter with the joints in the back so something like this for the middle one, that for the one on the right, and that for the one on the left. Let's start to add in some decoration, so we're going to grab the dark wood arches. There's one on each side above the door, and we'll make sure to carry the dark wood pole down into the ground. For the doors on the front and forest side of the structure, we're going to have a dark wood arch on the exterior and also the interior side of the structure. We're also going to add a stone wall at the front of the structure, so grab your stone wall 2 by one place two of them down. We're going to come two and a half along, alternate the bricks back, and then on each edge we'll place down another stone wall one by one. Another two stone wall two by ones just to mark out placement. We'll go another two and a half, again alternating the bricks and a one by one on each edge. You can now take out these other ones that block the path and using the dark wood dividers, we're going to place one on each side. Trim these off with a dark wood pole. Same again for the sections in front of the doorways. And also we'll do it on the opposite side here. I just think that this makes the front of the structure just look a lot more interesting. And speaking of interesting, let me tell you about this video's sponsor, GPortal. GPortal offer reliable dedicated servers for over 100 games, including Valheim. If you're not familiar with what a dedicated server is, it's basically a private server for you and your friends, which removes the requirement for a single person to act as the host meaning that you and your friends can sign into the server and progress the world at any time. So just think about how excited your friends will be when they come back from a hard day's work in the real world and discover their brand new blacksmith's workshop that you've built for them on your shared playthrough. The best part is that you can fully configure your own package depending on how long you want the server and the number of players you need to support. So you'll never have to pay for more than what you need. On top of that, you can save an extra 10% by using my referral link, which you can find in the video description. By clicking on the link, all the discount will be applied automatically, so you can have a look at what the pricing will be like without any commitment. We're nearly done, all we need to do is add in some detail now, so I'm going to have the stone cutter outside with the tool shelf up above, and this is just purely for decoration and we'll get rid of the workbench afterwards. We'll have some Deverga wall lanterns on the inside here and above the door, and then just sort of randomly around the structure, I'll have a couple of blue banners. On the interior, of course, we need a couple of blue banners still. And we do need to fill in these gaps on the roof. So it's going to be, again, similar to before. Wood wall 26 degree on either side. We'll have a wood wall half along the bottom. This time I'm going to jump up onto the top row and then place one in here too. I'm going to put a dark wood beam along the length of the structure. And if I'm not mistaken, I should be able to take out this piece here without damaging the rest of the structure. I really like having an opening here because you get to see the smoke channeling through the fireplace. For placing out the workbench in the forge, I'm going to use the stone wall one by one. You'll miss a gap from the door. Place down alternating bricks here and we're going to go three high. Then we can place in our workbench. We'll put the chopping block next to the door. The shelf can go in the upper right. 
of the tannin rack on the right lower. And then we might just have to place down some stairs to place the ads just on the top. And we'll have a Dvergo wall lantern just underneath like so. That's the workbench done. We have a very convenient spot here for an artisan table. You can actually place down a maximum level cauldron here if you want to, but I don't need to in this build, so I'm not going to. And for the forge, we'll have something very similar to the workbench, but on the opposite side. The one for the forge doesn't need to be as big, so it's only going to be three wide, as opposed to the four wide one we did for the workbench. But it's more or less the same, and we'll place down the forge. The bell is just on the left of the forge. We'll have the smith's anvil just next to the hearth. The anvils can go next to the door. And I like to place the forge cooler just on the outside here for a little bit of decoration. All that's missing is some rugs of your own choice. I prefer the lox rug. And the iron cooking station above the hearth in the corner. And now you know how to build the blacksmith's workshop. So if you made it this far, please do like the video if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Valheim content. If you really like this build but you don't want to build it yourself, you can join my YouTube channel as a member and gain exclusive access to all my world files through my Discord community server. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.